So welcome to the YouTube channel workshop. My name is Andy Rush. I am the online course media development or the coordinator of online course media development. Dave Wilson, assistant director, assistant director of CERT. Um, we just to give you a little bit of, of background, we're we're going away from some of the other streaming technologies. And so what we want to do is is in the in the meantime, getting away from ShareStream, which is a part of Blackboard, um, people who want to put videos online. We're trying to get people to at least explore YouTube, um, at least for the more public and forward-facing videos. However, there is also some privacy settings that you can use with YouTube to, to keep those videos somewhat private. Um, we've got to kind of explore something that's going to be similar to ShareStream in the future and maybe with future LMSs that we use. Um, more to stay tuned to your local news station about that kind of stuff, too. Um, so YouTube is a, is a great place not only to, to put your videos, but also to kind of curate and, and do some neat things. So um, that's kind of by way of the, of the introduction about um, getting a YouTube channel is maybe going to be important to your life. Uh, I've created a screencast, and, and this will be available online, and I can send you folks um, the links to the resources that we talk about today. There's a page and some links off of that page and then some other things that we'll send to you. So I'm going to just play this video. Before you start the video, we should mention, too, that uh, what we're covering today is really the functionality of the YouTube channel and not necessarily um, all the functionality of YouTube because uh, there's so much it would take us several workshops like this to cover everything. We plan on doing more in the future. So this really isn't about necessarily um, creating videos so much as customizing your channel and your online YouTube presence. And, and following on that, one of the advantages of having your videos up on YouTube is that they can go in lots of different places. They can be embedded in Blackboard. They can be embedded in other web pages and, and so forth. So here's the video about signing up for a, U, for a YouTube account if you don't have it. I'll show you how to set up a Google account. And ultimately, we're going to set up a YouTube account so we can upload videos to our account on the web. So. If you don't have any Google account whatsoever, you don't have a Gmail account, we're going to start from scratch. So normally what you would do to get a YouTube account is to sign into your Gmail and, and then go through the process of getting your YouTube account started. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to create a brand new Google account, and then we'll create a YouTube account. So let's start by going to Google. And if we click on Gmail, you'll get this page. You'll get this, uh, you know, account login screen. We don't have a Gmail account, so we need to create one. So let's go ahead and click on this create account link. And you'll need to fill in some information. Um, this account will give you access to all these things like a, like a uh, Google Drive account and a Photos account and a Google Play account. So this is where you go to get all these things. So I'm going to type in just my first name, last name. Don't look at my mobile phone. OK, so we have successfully completed the setup of a Gmail account. So I have my Gmail address and now I can continue on to Gmail and see what things look like. And we'll close. Do both of you have account. Gmail accounts? So what we okay. Is we want to go to YouTube. Okay, what we'll do is we'll sign in. And it's as simple as that. You're now registered with YouTube. Now, if I click on the My Channel link over on the left-hand side, it's going to ask us, use YouTube as, and this is going to be fine for now. We'll click on Create Channel. And now we have our channel. If you get an error that says something 
wasn't quite right or an error occurred, um, give it a few seconds. Sometimes that takes the channel uh, a minute or two to kind of create itself so that you have access to this. So now we have a YouTube account that we can start adding videos. So you would click on the upload button and upload videos here. If we go back to our I'm main channel. Stop this right here because we're going to demonstrate all of this. What you're Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is, even though I said we don't really cover uploading videos two minutes ago, um, we do cover uploading videos. It's just, uh, again, there's a lot that you can do with videos, so it's not really about videos as much as the channel itself. So uh, I'm just going to minimize this so I can see some of the videos that we have here. Um, so to upload a video, you just click, uh, as Andy said in the video, on the upload button in the upper right hand corner next to the search bar. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, you can select files to upload by clicking on this button, but one of the easiest ways to do it is to just drag them onto, from your, excuse me, drag them from Explorer onto this area in YouTube and it will automatically start uploading. Now that I've done that, I'll go ahead and maximize this again. And you'll see as it's uploading, it lets us change some information about the videos so we can kind of get them ready while we're waiting. One of the things that um, you may not see immediately is under the publish all button, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute, there's this set privacy option. And what this does is it lets you set the privacy option for all of the videos you're uploading in this batch. So if you're doing two videos like I am, um, it will set the privacy for all of them. If you're doing 20 videos, it will set them all. And YouTube has three different privacy settings. Um, public is exactly what it sounds like. Um, that means that anybody can go to YouTube and search um, using the YouTube search and find your video. What unlisted is, and this is the type that a lot of faculty use at UNF, is the video is open and people can, who have the link to it are able to see it, but it's not listed in the YouTube search engine, and it's uh, kind of secure by obscurity. So as long as um, nobody gives this link out that you don't expect to have it, or no, somebody doesn't give this link to someone you don't want to have it, then it's fairly safe. So um, a lot of professors are using this with their Blackboard courses, where they make a video unlisted because it gives you more flexibility, um, but it is still private and it doesn't come up in the search settings. And then the final option is private. And what that means is you actually have to go in through the YouTube settings and specify the people that you want to have access to it. So all of the people that you want to have access to your video would have to have a, a Google account. Um, and then you could kind of invite them and they would have to be logged into either YouTube or their, their Google account to be able to watch the videos. Um, and then for the first video, you can see that it's kind of expanded and you have the information um, that you can change for the video. So here are the title. So I'm just gonna call this the cert. Enter. Um, and of course, titles are important because that's what people will see um, as the title of the video, if you do have it as public. Um, and also, it will be listed as the title if you're, say, embedding it somewhere. That will be the header for it. Now, I'm going to set the privacy for these to unlisted for now. Um, the next thing is the description. And even if you have an unlisted video, it's important to have a description because um, it really tells your viewers what the video is about. It's also a place to put any kind of credits. So if you're using, say, um, audio from the YouTube audio library um, and you need to credit the musician or the person who created the music, um, you can do that there. And um, you can provide links to additional information. So if you uh, have a video of um, a particular concept that you're teaching and you want to provide additional links to, say, books or um, blog posts or things like that, or even your website, you can do that here. So I'm just going to write a short description. Uh, 
Um, the next thing is tags. And tags are really important in YouTube because it's how YouTube associates videos with one another. Um, so you, if there are channels or people that are publishing videos to YouTube, maybe you have colleagues that are publishing video to YouTube, you may want to look at the, the tags that they're using and use those tags as well. So then your video can be associated or grouped with those videos for things like um, when you have the YouTube player, this right-hand side of the screen on your browser lists other videos that people can watch. Um, so if you have your tags set up correctly, then those videos will be based off of those tags, or at least those tags will play into what YouTube selects. So for this, I'm just going to use cert education. And if you want something that is two words or more than two words, like let's say higher education, um, then these are separated by commas. So if I just put a comma there, you'll notice that even though this is two words, it's still considered to be one tag. Um, you can change the thumbnail here. So uh, you can see YouTube's already processed this video. Um, and it will select three frames out of the video that it thinks would be good thumbnails. But you can also create custom thumbnails. Um, and you'll notice in YouTube channels that um, people will create a kind of themed thumbnail where maybe they have the name of their channel up in the top right corner and then use a frame from the video um, to show what the content is. Um, so you're able to create custom thumbnails, and I've done that already. Um, so if I go to here, oh, it comes there. And then select, I know this is terribly ugly, but you can tell that it is not part of this video. Um, so then this will be an option. Um, under the advanced settings, I do recommend that you go into the advanced settings um, and look at all of these options. And I'm gonna cover a couple of them, but not all of them. So comments is important. If you're doing something, let's say that you are making available to a course and you're not sure about the maturity level of your students that are in that course, you may want to make comments unavailable so you don't have somebody go in there and you know kind of flame your video. You can always control. So if somebody puts a comment that is inappropriate, you can always go and remove it. Um, but for some videos, if the purpose is just to put into a Blackboard course or that kind of thing, it may be beneficial to turn off comments. Um, the other thing is the licenses and rights ownership. Um, and by default, it's the standard YouTube license. This is something that you can change in your channel settings as well that will apply to all future videos that you upload. But if you look, there's these little gray circles with white question marks in them. And these are just little help icons. So whenever you have a question about this stuff, you can click on them, and this will tell you that the standard license is found in the YouTube Terms of Service. I'd really encourage you, if you're using YouTube to upload videos, to read this, because um, while I'm not a lawyer, I'm going to summarize it. And basically, um, what YouTube does is when you upload videos, first you're saying that you own the rights to the video. It's your video. Uh, you have clear copyright for it. And two, that you're basically making YouTube a co-owner of that video, so if they wanted to use it in their marketing materials or anything that they're doing or their affiliates um, or what was it? Their successors. Successors, which I'm not sure what that is. It's anyone um, that buys them later in life. Okay. Yeah. So, can so when Google well. owns the world. And, and that's the, yeah, that, that, that's kind of the cost of using YouTube. So you're not necessarily paying for YouTube, but you are making them a co-owner of your material. And then the other option is the Creative Commons attribution. And this is the CC BY attribution if you're familiar with Creative Commons. Basically what you're doing with that is you're saying that anybody can use your video for basically any purpose, either non-commercial or commercial, and that um, all they have to do is uh, attribute the video to you. So if Andy has a Creative Commons video up on his site, and I say, oh, wow, that'd be great for our CERT um, I don't know, advertising video, I could pull that and use it 
um, and change it and make changes to it. And then all I would have to do is put, you know, um, video by Andy Rush down at the bottom. Now, um, I like to I, I like to make things Creative Commons that I do because I, I like sharing stuff and I think that um, with communities like this, it's important. Um, and as part of that, I would also, even though you don't have to, there's nothing with the license that says, I have to contact Andy and say, hey, I saw your video and that you have Creative Commons, do you mind if I use it for this project? And I'd probably give him a link to it once it was done and say, hey, this is what I did with it, I hope you like it. Um, so that's one of those kind of good citizen things that I recommend that you do. If you see or search for videos that are Creative Commons, um, even though you're free to use them, it's still nice. And I've had a couple things with um, my photographs where people have reached out and said, hey, I want to use your, your pictures for this or that project. And it, it makes me feel good to see that people value my stuff and want to use it in their projects as well. So I don't want to spend too much time on that, but um, you do have the option to change this. Um, the other thing is the category. It's important to set the category because YouTube has a limited number of categories for their videos. And again, this is used when it's making suggestions for other videos for people. And also if people are searching by category, um, they would be able to, to find your video that way um, as well. Again, if you're making a video unlisted, it might not be as necessary, but you never know what you're going to do with your video in the future. So it's always nice to get the stuff taken care of while um, it's fresh in your mind and you know what the video is, especially if you're changing thumbnails and things. You may not have um, a good description and you might not really know what the video is that you're working on. So it's good to have all of this information. Can you talk about the caption certification? Do you know? So the caption certification, certification, let me bring this up, is really for commercially produced stuff okay. um, for the FCC. I will talk about captioning, um, captioning okay. um, and Andy's probably going to have to help me with it. Um, but yeah, but this is a different thing. So okay. if you look at the options, it's, you know, uh, content has never been aired on television in the U.S., so those kinds of things. Okay. Um, so let me just go to this second video. So for the remainder of the videos, the first one you get the information kind of for free, but this one you have to click on that more um, link to pull this down. And I'm sorry that I did that kind of fast. Um, but again, it's the same thing. So you would put in uh, basic info and description. could upload a thumbnail or choose one of these. I like that picture. That looks good. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to select that one. If you came with me. <laughs> and um, when you're finished, you just choose Done With Home. And what happens when you upload a video, and correct me if I'm wrong with this, but um, YouTube will kind of mark it to be analyzed and automatically captioned as the default thing. So you don't really have to do anything for it to start being captioned, but also we found that it's not very regular in how it captions in terms of time. So uh, you may upload a video and it may caption almost immediately, um, or you may the next day upload a video that's very similar, same length and everything, and it may take a long time, days or even weeks, before the captioning happens. So we're not really sure how it works, but we'll kind of go through the captioning options as well. Hopefully um, by the end of this uh, workshop, one of these will be captioned and we have a sample video too. If it's not, uh, it should have some captions in it. Um, and once you click done here, are you able to come back and change some of these parameters? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You're always able to go back and okay. change these parameters. I don't think that there's anything in here that you can't change later. Um, okay. So 
But it, it is just kind of a, a nice workflow. And because these videos were small, they're already done and ready to go. So full quality, um, you know, here's the links. So YouTube makes this really easy. So speaking a little bit about just the, the processing that's going on behind the scenes, if you upload a video and then you go to look at it, um, let's, let's say you took video with a high definition camera and you uploaded it and it says it's done processing. You may go to that page and the, and the video looks fuzzy. Um, it looks kind of pixelated or grainy or however you want to describe it. There's still processing going on in the background because YouTube is actually creating multiple versions of the video. So it first creates a low resolution version and then higher and higher resolutions until it goes all the way up to the to the resolution that you uploaded. Um, and that's just so, that's because different devices will treat YouTube in different ways. So if you have an iPhone and you're looking at YouTube videos, it's one resolution. If you've got an iPad, it's a second one. If you're on a computer, it's another one. If you're on a, uh, a Chromecast or an Apple TV box, it's it's yet another, another type. So I guess that can be the transition for me talking about um, a little bit more of the settings having to do with the channel itself. I've made some initial kind of, and this is the actual site that I created from that video that we started with. I created a Google uh, email address, and then I created the YouTube account. So this is actually andyrushunf at gmail.com, um, and that's you know where the name came in. Um, so one of the things that you might want to do is you know just have a simple channel description so that people know what this is. I'm not going to get too you know too crazy here. YouTuber um, tech guy. Model. All right. And so I, as soon as I click on done, I'll have that saved as part of my my description here. Now, right now, there's not a whole lot of, of there's these, you'll see these uh, pencils appear for things that you can modify, but there's those pencils don't appear anywhere else. And there's there are some that are up in for the picture, what we call the channel icon and then the channel art. Um, but the rest of the stuff, there's there's even more capabilities to allow you to really customize this channel. So what you want to do is you want to click on this gear icon, and you want to choose customize the layout. Right now it's turned off, so we're just going to turn it on and say save. And now we've got the capability to to do a few more things with our channel. Um, we'll be able to as we as we add videos, we'll be able to bring things uh, up in these different sections. So, but first I want to talk about, and I didn't bring my pictures um, that I was going to change, but just to give you the idea of, of what you would do here. You've got a Google account, and so the Google account determines what the channel icon is going to be. So this icon is also on my Google Plus page, or, or this guy's uh, Google Plus page. It's also on the YouTube account. It's also on my Google Drive. Anywhere Google kind of um, manifests itself out on the web associated with your with your account, this icon will be associated with it. So when you go and you edit this, and you say edit here, it actually goes to your Google uh, Plus account. And so you can upload a photo or you can choose a photo that you've already used. So if you've got uh, multiple personalities, you can switch from one to the other and, and, and choose any of them as you wish. But um, again, just clicking on upload photo, photo will allow you to choose an image and you'll need to do some cropping, and, and you can see that this isn't going to exactly work, but I'll, I'll just do something like this where it's right in the middle. I'll click on Done. Right. So it's changed here. I'm going to go back to my YouTube channel and refresh the page. And you'll notice that the icon doesn't change quite yet. So there's actually some propagation that needs to happen between all the, all the channel accounts. If you go back to this page later on this afternoon, it'll probably be done. Uh, so just be aware that if you do change your icon and you think, oh, it didn't take it, well, let me go back and do it again. It's, it's, it's actually kind of processing in the background, but it needs to, to get to all those other accounts. Your channel art is this header here. And it also manifests itself in different ways depending on what device you're using to, to access YouTube. So your, your phones and your, your tablets and that kind of thing are going to look different depending on, on the image that you choose. So I'll click on this icon here and just say edit channel art. And you can upload photos. You can drag them into this window. If you've got other photos that are here, you can use those. 
or you can choose from a gallery. Um, you know, we're in Florida, so maybe we want something that looks more like a tropical paradise. And this is how it's going to manifest itself on these devices. So the desktop is just a header at the top of the page. If you've got a, an Apple uh, TV, this is more of what you're going to be able to see in that channel description. And then the mobile device is just, again, a smaller header here. You can adjust the crop of it. Notice that you've got kind of this intermediate area here and then the large version. So um, there's not too much customization that you can do with, with where this header appears versus what the large image is. You can move it back and forth and, and even do some resizing if, it's, if the image gives you that capability. But sometimes you're kind of left with not too many options. So I can go up or down. So maybe I want to get that kayak in there a little bit more than that. And I'll just say select and then we're done. So one thing that we can do in, in CERT is if you do have um, an idea of what you want for your channel art, um, but have problems because of the limitations on the way this works, um, come talk to us because we can probably figure out a way to create an image that looks the way you'd like it to, or at least close to the way you'd like it to on all devices. So we've got our, our, our channel kind of mostly complete. I'm going to show you some more details about customization in just a second. And I also want to kind of draw your attention to what, what YouTube does. Um, and that's the, cur that's the curation aspects of what, of what YouTube is. It's, it's the ability to not only put your videos up, but for you to find other videos that are out there and, and kind of add them to your channel. Um, you've also got these things called, these people called, I shouldn't call them things, they're people <laughs> called subscribers. Um, and anyone who comes to your channel that isn't you will have this subscribe button that says, no need to subscribe to yourself, maybe. Um, but if you came to my channel, you'd be able to subscribe here. And then I'd have, it'd be, it's, it's almost like being, uh, you know, following somebody on Twitter, um, liking or following somebody on Facebook, that kind of thing. It's a, it really is a social media um, kind of, of, a, of a channel. Um, so you can subscribe to those videos. Now, once you've got subscribers, you'll have two different types of viewers that, that come to your channel. Subscribers is one, and new visitors is another one. So as you're looking at your channel, as you're, as you're editing your channel, and again, you've got now these, these pencil icons where I can change these different areas, but notice that it says you're viewing it as yourself. Okay, this is how you're seeing everything that you need to see. If you want to see what new subscribers see as the new channel, you're going to click here and, and say, I'm sorry, new visitors, you'll click here. And it'll say, this channel has no content. All right? Um, you can click on videos, and you'll see that there are some videos, but there's nothing displayed on the home channel. So we do want to go back and, and make some of those modifications to, to make it somewhat compelling, as opposed to this channel has no content, even though we know it does. All right? Um, so there's, and there's playlists and other things. This is how your channel looks to others. I'll click on done. Now I want to ch change this and say, what does it look to returning subscribers? Okay, again, no content. So we want to make sure that we go and we, we add some, some compelling stuff to this. So let's click done, right? And so you've got, you've got videos that are, that are here. So they can see these at any time. You've also got playlists that I can add, all right? So I'm going to create a new playlist. I'm going to call it Florida, all right? And it's got this kind of funky icon. There's nothing in it yet, so, so this is kind of a placeholder. Um, I'm just going to go up here and do a search, and that's spelled wrong. Sorry, sorry, Florida. Try that. Um, and then just scroll down a little bit, and I'll choose this one. I'll click on Add To, and I've only got two channels. Actually, there's there's three, but um, I can create a new. I thought there was favorites. Maybe, maybe that's not there. Maybe that was an old feature. That's another thing that you'll discover with Google is things change without any notification at random times. Um, something might be there one day and not be there another day, and then it's changed into something else later yeah. on. I think I still have a favorites list, but it's listed alongside the other playlists. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to add this to Florida. Okay. Um, let's go and search for more Florida videos and just get one more so that we have. I'll, I'll just choose this next one. Uh, Florida Powerball, of course, we want to have that as part of our playlist. Say that. And now if I go back to my channel, 
and I go to playlists, this playlist is now populated with those two videos. So there might be a course that you're teaching with a related subject that you want to put all of your videos related to that subject in one area that they can go to, and you can direct your students to go to that place. You can, like we said, we briefly talked about before, you can embed these videos in different places. You can also embed playlists in, in pages. So you can have the whole subject, uh, you know, category playlist in a, in a particular web page as well. Okay. Um, so let's go to new visitor. So there's no content there. Let's go back and, and edit this so there's some content. So we're going to add a section, and we'll just say um, uploads horizontal row. Let's say we're done. So I just I went down to the bottom and I just clicked on the add new section or add a section area. So if I look at this as a visitor, we should now see uploads. And you'll notice that the two videos that I uploaded at the beginning of the workshop are not listed there because those are unlisted videos. So they're basically hidden from the public in your channel as well as from searches and things. Excellent point. So if I'd like to add another section called Creative Playlists, say done. And now if we go back and this as a new visitor, it will see uploads and creative playlists. Subscribers do see something a little bit different. Um, that stuff without the without the introduction there. So this will change as you start to add different areas. Right. One other aspect that I forgot to mention up here, there was the channel art, which we took care of. And we edited the channel art and we put the, the kayak in here. You can also add links in this section. Okay, so if I click on edit links, this will bring us to yet another area. And this is actually the about page, essentially. But this is where you're going to add things like custom links. So um, I'm going to click on this Add button. And I'm just going to link this to the CERT website. Okay. And so our URL, let's take it here. Um, two slash CERT. Say done. Okay, so it's, and it also takes in that the channel art that's associated with the, uh, or the, the icon, the favicon from the CERC website. So if we look at this in the channel itself, you'll now have this link over here. Um, you can also add things like your Twitter account. You can add um, your Google Plus page, whatever else you want to go in here that you know doesn't totally overwhelm the, the, the room in here. Um, you can add all that stuff as as links in that, in that space. Okay. Um, That's pretty much it. This is a place to kind of explore. Um, you can add channels that are, you know, that you want to have as featured channels. You can go in and type some different ones um, and, and put those over on the side. So if there's other channels that um, other organizations that you know of that you want to kind of point your students to or, or let your students know about, you can put those uh, those up on that, that screen as well. Sure, we're back on. So if you click on videos, you'll see all the videos that are there. Um, some of these won't be, again, this is as myself. If I go to new visitor, I won't see all those other videos. If I go to playlists, those, those should be there. Um, I, I'm not subscribed to any channels, so no channels appear here. So if I go back to, um, let's just go to playlists for a second. So BuzzFeed Yellow, I'll just click on subscribe, go back to my channel, and if I go to channels, now those channels are, are going to populate themselves. So anything that you subscribe to will be, will be added here. Um, and then the About page is, is just that. And you can also do things like if you want people to have your email, you can, you can display your email. Um, 
you just click on this button, you add it. What will happen is when they go to this page and they want to see the email so that it, so the spam bots don't gather up email addresses, they need to enter what's called a CAPTCHA. Everybody know what a CAPTCHA is? Just type in the code that appears in the funny looking text um, and then people will be able to see your email address. But you don't have to put that in here if you don't want to. All right, let's go to a video that we've got here. And I'll just show you a, a few things. Um, Hi, my name is Andy. Again, this is where you go back and you can edit any of the, the parameters of, of the video that's here. So you've got um, your, your title, your description, any tags that you put in, advanced settings. You can go here and I can change this to Creative Commons if I want to. It changed the category and lots of other options. Okay, um, you've got this enhancement, which which I'm not I'm not going to I'm going to leave you to, but it's basically kind of just changing the look of your of your video. Um, so I'm going to stay on this page. Audio, you can go in and you can add some music if you want to. Annotations are uh, again beyond the scope of, of where this is. Cards also are a little bit beyond what we want to do with this. Um, subtitles is. Um, what we mentioned before. And so I'm going to go, I'll leave this page. And so what has happened is these automatic subtitles have, have occurred here. Now, what you might see when you first start this, and I think you might have mentioned this, but basically you have to specify what language you're going to use. So when you when you go and, and, and upload a video, the subtitles are being created automatically for you in the background, but you first have to tell YouTube what kind of, what language subtitles you're going to be using. Um, and that may pop up on the screen. And then you can also click, you can choose English, and then you can also say, use this language for all the other videos that go up. Then you will see that the subtitles are here. And this is actually where you can go edit them. So um, if, I, if something isn't, isn't correct here, um, I don't see anything right, right off the bat. Um, but if you see words that are misspelled, you can actually go in and you know, highlight the stuff and then go in and actually edit the text. I need to click edit first. So I think that third one, myriad, should be narrated. You are absolutely right. So let's make that change. Okay. So many. And I'll just say publish edits. So watch what happened. You've got the automatic version here, and then you've got this one, which is user generated. All right. And what will happen when we go back to the main page and we use... My name is Andy Rush, and I work as the coordinator of online course media development at the University of North Florida. And this is a demonstration of narrated PowerPoint. So see narrated? So that change is, is made for you. Now you'll get some really funny, ha-ha funny, and maybe not so ha-ha funny uh, errors. Um, I've had all kinds of words being put in some of my videos where I didn't speak quite clearly enough. Um, so you want to make sure that if you're if you're exposing subtitles, you, you want to make sure that you uh, make those changes. Um, and obviously, if you're doing online courses, you want to make sure that the, for accessibility, you have these um, subtitles available to you. Does that answer your, some of your questions that you yeah, did? Yeah, and just tell me where you told it to put those up automatically, or does the so, person so YouTube, really put them on? As soon as you create your account and you upload yeah. the video, that stuff is being processed in the background. So if I go and I, I click on this CC, you won't see this if, if you are just arrive at this video as, as a visitor, but these are all your editing buttons, essentially, for, your, for a video in your account. So if I click on CC here, it will go to the closed caption area, and... It'll, it'll say something like English automatic right here. And if you click on that, it may first ask you what language you're going to use. I chose English and said do it for all the subsequent videos, so it's not asking me anymore. Okay. So, so I, think, yeah, I guess what I'm asking is, as the viewer, as a new subscriber, or I mean a new visitor, when I come to your PowerPoint, are the subtitles going to show automatically? Did you turn them depends on, on Yeah, it depends on the user. They may have their subtitles turned on automatically. So the user viewing it right. has that option to turn them on. Right. And it's so not that your video forces them to be on. Let's see if I got. Um, if I went to this page as, a, as, as not myself, I would mm -hmm. see um, a button like this. Okay, so they would have to turn it on. When so they you can't force it, it to be on. You'll see a little red line underneath okay. it. Um, 
And, and there may even be a setting for a user where it automatically shows closed captioning. It might I, be a preference. I think it remembers. So if okay. you turn it on right. for one video, at least for that session, okay. it, it stays on. And you'll notice, Catherine, down there at the bottom right-hand corner, the community submissions mm -hmm. right now are turned off. Okay. But if you turn that on, what that means is anybody can go in okay. and kind of fix, fix um, your... or change the okay. um, Captioning, yeah. So they really mean that they could go in and make it worse. How, yeah. how, you're, yeah. how trusting you are of the YouTube community. Mm -hmm. If you've ever read YouTube comments, <laughs> um, you may not be all that trusting the YouTube community. Is there any, any words associated with this one? Okay, there's not. Let's go back to. I think I already did this. CERC. Yeah, so if we go here and click on English Automatic, again, you might get a, a warning that says, what language do you want to use? Um, I want to make sure that I go back and, and edit this. Just choose this to search, publish edits. So that's one of the uh, editing things that you can do with your videos once they're uploaded is change those subtitles. Another one that you may want to do, and this is, this is specific uh, a, a very specific instance to this lab where I'm recording this video right now using the recorder built into the system up here. So it's got, uh, it's capturing exactly what you see on the screen here. Now we started the recording and then waited maybe a few more seconds for people to come or, or whatever. So there may be a little bit of stuff in the beginning that we want to get rid of. So you can trim videos once they're up on YouTube. Okay, so you can use the editor that's there. Um, let me go back and choose my, my slideshow video because I don't care about, about, about destroying it. Um, so you want to go and you want to edit this particular video. Um, there's, there's some weird ways to kind of get there, but let's go back to my channel and I'll show you. If I go here, oh, notice that our... Our icon has changed here, but but not here. So it's making progress. All right. Let me go back to let me go to Creator Studio, and I need to go to this area here where it says Create. And there's an audio library where you can you can add uh, music to your videos, but there's also a video editor. Okay. Now I will call this non-destructive editing, and the reason that I that I say that is that's a term that editors use in, in terms of you know, things that you change in your video, it's kind of a list of, of changes and not the actual changes to the file. Same thing here. I need to take an original video like this narrated slide and drag it into the timeline down here. So I'm just dragging it from up here down to here and dropping it in there. My name is Andy Rush. Okay. So now I can go and I can trim the beginning and end points. So I just start, I click on this blue bar or hover over this blue bar, click down and drag in. So I can, you know, take off 50 seconds worth of, or start 50 seconds into the video. And then I can go and you know, make this about a minute long instead of three minutes long. Okay. And then once I can, I can change some of these other things here if I want to. You've got lots of um, kind of parameters to change. But once I'm, I've done that, you also, it's going to appear as my edited video. You can go up and you can change the name of what this new video is going to be. But I'll just simply click on create video. And it's just like you uploaded a new video. So it needs to take that video, translate it to another spot on the YouTube servers, and, and reprocess it. So it doesn't actually get rid of the previous video. Exactly. Yep, that original video is not going to go away. The only way that you can make that original video go away is to go in your video manager and delete the video. And I'm guessing it was fuzzy because it was still rendering it? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's it's taking kind of a, the real rough version of it and it's got a, it's gonna go through that processing uh, it's gonna go through that process and in a little while, as it says, it will come back with the edited version of your video. And you can go in and you can modify any of these parameters for that new video. So you can go into advanced settings and and, and change the category if you need to. So it just it essentially duplicates, in this case, uh, uh, the video that you had before. And I could have added music, uh, you know, music bed to this if I wanted to as well. Right. So 
you folks, do you have any any other questions? We've we've kind of, and I'll show you the resources in a second, but um, we've we've covered I think most of what we wanted to talk about. But um, did you have anything that you wanted to make sure that you got out of this class? Um, one thing I'm curious about is uh, subchannels because I found that feature in YouTube, and I made one, and I probably want because what I want to do is like have my regular account, not really have videos there, just use it for saving and stuff. Then I want like a personal account, and then once I start teaching online, maybe I have a separate one for that. Okay. I noticed that I can make more than one channel on the same account. What do you know about that? That's interesting. I I don't know as I can really tell you much about that. Um, you know, I've just created other channels, so I don't know that, and that might be something that we were able to create at one time, and then they, they did away with it. No, as far as I know, you it's still, still there. You still can. It's because I did When's the last like time you created a sub-channel? Like a few weeks ago. Okay. Can you show us here? Do you mind? Sure. So, um, oh, well, <clears throat> I don't have anything uploaded, that's the thing. So I can, you know, go into my account and show you that, but. Okay, or I mean. Do you know where, where it was that you set it up in the... Oh, um, here? go to the um, icon in the top right where it says start. Or actually, I think I think we're in the uh, feature scene. Uh, the scroll yeah. down on. So is it the add account? Is that... It's not add account. It's um, uh, scroll down. This one... Because I know there's also... You know, there's different features, and that's that's the thing about YouTube is that hit, there's hit, no rhyme or reason. Hit that gear icon. Yeah, you know, there's a there's See an here. advanced section. Um, there's a create a new feature. channel. That was it. There you go. You can yeah, new channel comes with it. Okay. And I think the category lets you choose what kind of channel it is. Agree. Oh, there's a checkbox there. Sure, I'll agree to anything. As far as I can tell, it's very similar to what you would do on Facebook when you want to create a fan page that's not your main, like, friends thing. Now, I do know that I've seen kind of popular YouTubers that will have different channels for different things. So let's say that one of the things they do is play video games online. Um, and another thing they do is video blogs. So they will have separate channels that are connected, and maybe that's where that comes in. We can have different yeah. themes of channels. Because I, I wanted to keep like my subscription separate from my personal, like creative stuff, separate from my teaching stuff. Yeah. So that may be a good way to do that. We can look into it um, and get back to you on that. Okay. Um, one of the unfortunate things that is associated with a given channel, you can you can direct your students to the channel, um, but it, unfortunately, and unless you have lots and lots of subscribers, you're going to get youtube.com slash channel slash yuck at the end. Um, yeah. And unless you have, I think, over 200 subscribers or something along that line, maybe it's 100, I, I, that's something else that changes. Um, You'll, you'll have to deal with this unfortunate URL at the end. If you do get that many subscribers, you can actually go in and say, I want it to be uh, slash channel slash Andy Rush. Did they and notify if, you if that's, if you have enough subscribers? I don't know if they even notify you. I think you have to kind of you just have to be aware of how many you can get. If you go to, um, let me go to the Creator Studio. And let's see. Have to become a partner, I think. Yeah. Right. yeah. So custom URLs. Yeah. I mean, so there's. I mean, there's like two advanced areas, which which is maddening in terms of its navigation and, <laughs> and understanding. But basically. Uh, our custom URL system has changed, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Is you know this is my user ID and this is my channel ID. Okay, the same thing. 
you know, your new channel, your, it, it'll be Google Plus is the same way. If I click on learn more, it's going to tell me the parameters of these. So the eligibility requirements are 100 or more subscribers. It needs to be at least 30 days old. Uh, be in good standing. That's, that is, you, you'll get dinged if you upload copywritten videos um, or videos that have music in that you don't own the rights to, that kind of thing. If you keep doing that, what they'll do is just put advertisements over your videos. But if you do that more and more, they'll say, hey, you're doing this a lot. You're no longer in good standing. Get rid of some of this copyrighted material, that kind of thing. Um, but these are the basic um, parameters that you need to get a custom URL channel. My old, my personal YouTube account that I created many years ago, um, I was grandfathered in. So I was able to use, you know, use the, get a custom URL without having to have all these parameters. It's kind of unfortunate, but in some ways, you know, I understand they don't want just people creating uh, new spaces and then taking the spaces and their stuff. So, um, so anyway, other questions? There's a, a website that I've been working on as, as kind of a repository for some of the uh, workshops that we're doing. Um, it's just onlinecoursemedia.net. Um, so if you go to the main page, it may not be the first article that's there, but we created this YouTube channel workshop that has the links to the stuff that we talked about today. So if you click on the YouTube channels um, link in this article, it will go to the uh, YouTube account that we've been working on today. And if you click on the signing up and logging into YouTube, it goes to yet another site that has the video about how to, how to sign up. Not that you'll need that, but um, there may be something in there that, that gets you unstuck with a portion of signing up for an account. Right. Um, Can you link your channel to other Gmail accounts? I mean, there is a way to kind of co to, to consolidate you, uh, Google accounts. Um, I think that's a relatively new feature. So I'm not, I'm not very, very familiar, but I want to say that you can do that. Um, I know that they used to when, so Google released Google Plus, the service, their, their kind of competition to Facebook as a social media service. And when they did, they changed YouTube to where they forced YouTube users to use Google Plus as a management tool. And when they did that, there was that feature um, that was based off of kind of Google Plus, where you could have um, multiple people at the same channel and then linked channels and things like that as well. But there was a backlash. The YouTube community basically said, we don't want your Google Plus, we don't like it. And they kind of pulled back um, a lot of those settings and features as well. Those trailers. There is also a YouTube category. Um, there's just these two articles, but if you want to find out more about some of the Things that you'll need to know about actually making videos to, to put up on YouTube. Um, we kind of step, step you through the idea of, you know, we've got to start with shooting the actual video um, and then you know, getting the video onto your computer, editing it, talk a little bit about what you need to do that, um, and uploading, and then some basic instructions and some of the stuff that it changes constantly, so we can be aware that it does. But again, you can embed videos on, on Blackboard or any LMS that we might be using in the future, um, and as well as WordPress sites. Um, and the same thing goes for Vimeo, which is another service similar to YouTube, where you can also upload video. Um, so there's a lot of you know advantages to having a, an account like a YouTube account where you can put your own media up um, and choose the privacy of it, and then make that stuff go to where it needs to go in terms of helping out your, your students or your your fans or your colleagues or whatever. And another thing you can do with YouTube is you don't actually have to publish any video at all. You can act as a curator and just find videos that work well for the things that you want to share with people, even if somebody else has created it. And you can actually create a YouTube channel that's more of a resource than a publishing platform. Plus.
things that you do every day <laughs> to get to your own, because you, they're all bookmarked. Um, let me do a search. There we go. Oh, that's right. I got my username wrong. That's, that's why. So this is my channel, and, and as Dave says, um, I can go in and I can edit this. Um, I've got tons of playlists, um, have tons of videos, um, some different channels that I subscribe to. None of these could be mine, and I could still have a, a legitimate YouTube channel to kind of show people uh, lots of different topics. Of so I've got just basically some of my interests here, including the Florida section, of course. Because that was my plan. I was, uh, that's why we use my main channel for and do all the video posting on sub channels. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I actually use YouTube as more of a social tool than I do any of the social other social sites. Okay. My male model icon is still there, um, <laughs> but eventually it will change to our, our cert logo, or not our cert logo, the the faux cert logo. That thing that I made. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but so. Does that answer all your questions? I think so. If you have more or need assistance with some of the things associated with YouTube, um, right now we're encouraging you know faculty to get their own YouTube channel um, because the world of of video for courses and that thing is somewhat in turmoil in turmoil right now. I guess we'll say. Um, so having at least a, a place where you can put videos, especially in that unlisted fashion, is, is going to be a good way to go. Um, so we're, we'll work with you in whatever way you need to get things working the way you want them to. Thanks for coming, folks.